I want to make sure that you leverage the free subscription to the X-Force that Curator customers have. So I'm here in the X-Force Exchange and you can actually, when you the first time you, that you go here, if you haven't come here ever before, you can create your own, uh, get your own credentials uh, for it. So the visiting the site is free, but the pulling information from it is what you get for free from Curita. And let's say that I'm here and, and you can actually subscribe to get email notifications about new incidents and new things coming up. Uh, and But let's say that I, I'm here and I, uh, I'm looking at the, you know, collections of information that has been gathered by these uh, X-Force guys. And let's say that I'm interested in Lazarus because I, I have read that uh, there is a Lazarus uh, comeback. And I can click in here and read nice in description, nothing special here that tells you what it is. But what is really remarkable is these indicators of compromise. We see here MD5 and SHA1 hashes, IP address and URLs. And if I want to see whether any of these has happened in my enterprise, I will need to kind of a copy paste all these IOCs and put it into reference sets and, you know, get my, uh, that's too much work for that. Instead, I can just click on this am I affected button and see check for the last uh, three hours for me curator and notice that what curator is doing is actually very interesting from the x-force via api and i'll show you how that is configured in a minute but an api call is made to perform a search in curator for all those iocs it's a complex search that it will take you a while for you to to put together and he, Curator is coming back and saying, well, not only you are affected, but you are a screw. I found 87 events that have been identified with these IOCs. Gee, let me, let me take a look at those. So you click here. I'm already logged in, in in Curator on this browser. So I get here. Notice that's a, the, the search that I was telling you about that was automatically built for you with all those IOCs. And here are all the events. Ooh, pretty interesting. looks like we need to talk to Edgar and Corey here because they fell uh, for it. How you set this up is actually very simple. I'm going back to uh, here into the X-Force and I, the, the easiest one, there are multiple ways of doing this, but the, the easiest way is actually to click on your login and this is, I can actually close this in here and go into settings and there is an option here for curator integration. And in here, I specify the address of my curator box. And notice that this is a local address. I don't have to expose my, my console to the outside by any means. I'm doing this within the, the same browser. And in here, you need to put a security token that you get from the curator console. I mean, in case that you haven't done this, you need to actually go here into authorized service and you get a, a token and then it's kind of a little uh, odd the way you get the token but you get from the token you actually need to copy it from here okay the entire thing here you see it's a little awkward to do this part but you copy that and that's how you get an, an actual token and that's required for the api uh, authentication there is an additional thing you need to do to get this integration working and has to do with, uh, you know, not violating the, the same uh, origin policy on that browsers enforces. And for that, you need to whitelist the X-Force exchange to communicate with Curator. So you need to go to this directory here. Okay. Actually, we're going to make it bigger here. You go to that directory and in there, there is a file that you need to edit, this one. So, uh, allowed. And notice that in there, in 731, you get this already populated. In previous versions, you need to actually put these entries in here. Uh, and uh, you need to remove the, in case that you have in the first line, colon 443 you need to remove remove the colon 443 and that's all you need to do you save that file and you are golden you can actually oh one, one more thing is that when you exit this you need to actually force 
uh, so with the with the exclamation mark, uh, and that's all you need to do. When now from this point on, when you are in a particular uh, uh, collection, in all these collections you have that I'm affected button, and you can just click it and specify for how long do you want to actually perform the the search and the search is executed. If for any reason you get an error here, try reloading the page and that should fix the issue. So for example, I know that for this particular ransomware case, there are no log in my system that indicate that I have been compromised. That is actually pretty good. But again, the value of this doesn't stop from here. Let's say that you found that you've been affected or you are concerned that you might be affected. Then what you may want to do is actually say, well, in this particular case, from let's say that, that this is of your interest from ransomware to mining, uh, let's say that you, you want to grab all these IOCs and put them into some reference sets. Uh -huh. So for that, all you need to do is actually select on these three dots, get the taxi feed, I'm going to actually copy that URL, and I'm going to go into my curator console. I'm here on the admin tab. And if you haven't done this, I encourage you to do it. You may have this icon in here. If you don't have it, go to the App Exchange again on the same website. Uh, let's actually go there. On the same website, if you click here on App Exchange, one of these uh, applications, but the very many that curator has is the uh, the threat intelligence. This one over here. You download that, you know how easy it is to install applications in Curator, and voila, you are golden. So once you are in the air, let's say that I want to add, you know, if you haven't ever gone before here, you need to click on, when you click here on Threat Feeds, the only field that you can go is actually Configuration. And in it, you need to put a authorized service token from Curator, which I'm sure you, you've done before, but if, if you haven't, uh, all you need to do is go here into authorized services and get a token, and you actually grab it by selecting the, the actual token and do the copy in here and do, you paste it over there. You can add an authorized uh, service. When you add a token, you will need to deploy the changes, otherwise the token will not be ready. But that's actually pretty simple uh, to do. Once you've done that, you go into your Threat Intelligence app, and I have a couple of collections in here, and you add a new Threat Feed, a Taxi Feed, and you guess that right, you need to specify your uh, the uh, the URL that you copied before, the base uh, authentication mechanism is basic, and you need to specify the credentials of your X4 site uh, that you got when you first uh, created this. So I'm going to pause the video, put my credentials, and click Discover. Now, what you need to do is that what, what IOCs do you want from that list? Let's say I'm interested in uh, file hashes, right? And how do you often do you want to pull that? Well, I think every day is, is good enough. And this is the key part, pull initial date. Notice that uh, this, this uh, service was created a couple of days ago. So you need to specify the times that, that predates the creation of the actual uh, collection because unless the collection has published something new you are not going to get anything in here. So I'm going to, just for the sake of it, I'm going a month ago uh, and uh, so to make sure that it pulls even the initial collection and anything that has uh, come afterwards. And the next question is, where do you want to put those, Jose? Well, I want to put them in my SHA I have an SHA uh, hashes uh, it is an SHA one, so maybe I have some malware hashes. Let's see. Uh, yep, yeah, my malware file hash. Uh, uh, 
No, that's not it. Here it is, malware SHA-1. And I click Next, and I save this. I'm going to scroll down because I have a couple of uh, nice collections in here, and this is the one we just added. Now, what I need to do is actually ask it to pull now, and it's going to take a while, but it makes the API calls and get the, the actual uh, IOCs and populate those into my uh, reference set. Now, while that uh, uh, poll to, the, to populate my references with those IOCs takes place, I have an, uh, uh, an offense that actually fired from uh, those, uh, those events, and I ask uh, uh, Curator to actually investigate that particular incident. Remember that we were looking at the Lazarus collection, and sure enough, Watson indicates that that's actually confirms the fact that these IOCs, Watson knows that belongs uh, to the Lazarus group. And if I want to actually view this graphically, yeah, yeah, we can actually see that this is the Lazarus group, this is Edgar, and these are additional elements that Watson has seen that are not part of my offense, my, the part of things that are part of my offense are in gray, but this is blue are things that uh, I just uh, Watson knows about it, and I may actually, uh, most likely, these are additional uh, IOCs that may or may not be part of that collection, and you can also bring those into Curator, you see, by going into the reference sets and getting those IOCs as well, or you can export those into a stick and taxi, uh, and, and you know, actually, we, we can actually, I'm just curious and see what are the references that indicate that this is the Lazarus uh, group. And here we see the actual, yeah, some of these are the, this is actually all on, on the X4. So this is the same information. But you are seeing it from two components within Curator. And this also can help you get thread intel, not just from the X4, which is free, but anything that you may subscribe, uh, free or pay, that, that you deem uh, uh, that can yield uh, good indicators of compromise for detecting attacks in your enterprise. So it took a couple of minutes, but uh, actually we see that from that feed that we just did, we got our first uh, six uh, uh, malware hashes.